the United States dollar, a currency synonymous with power and influence in the global economy. But how did it become the world's reference currency? It all started with the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944, where nations agreed to peg the value of their currencies to the US dollar, which was backed by gold. This gave the dollar unparalleled strength and influence. The Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944, in short and simplified terms, stipulates that whoever delivers 35 US dollars, America will receive an ounce of gold. That is, if an individual goes to the US Central Bank, he can exchange $35 for an ounce of gold, and the United States, represented by the Central Bank, guarantees this. At that time, the dollar became a strong currency and gained international confidence because it was backed by gold. Countries began to accumulate large amounts of dollars in their reserves in the hope of converting their value into gold at any time. This situation persisted. But in 1971, President Nixon shocked the world by abandoning the gold standard, allowing the U.S. to print dollars without gold backing. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. This marked the beginning of a new era of economic dominance. At that moment, Nixon announced that the dollar would strengthen its power which is America's power, by essentially stating that the dollar would enter the market and engage in speculation. Its exchange rate would be determined by supply and demand, under the pretext that the dollar was strong due to its reputation and the strength of the American economy. That grand deception through which America deceived the world, the price of an ounce being $35, unfortunately left no country able to object or declare rejection of the new monetary system. Because such objection would then imply that all the billions of dollars in the treasuries of these countries, and in their banks, would become worthless paper. The consequence would be more than catastrophic for them. This incident was dubbed the Nixon shock. To further solidify the dollar's dominance, at that time, US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger went to Saudi Arabia and requested that anyone wishing to buy oil from them must pay or purchase in dollars only. Saudi Arabia did not object at that time. Following this, Nixon delivered his famous speech, we must play the game as we made it, and everyone will play it as we did. This system remains in place to this day. America prints whatever paper it wants and buys goods with it, all without objection encompassing the creativity of nation's productions. However, dissatisfaction with the dollar's hegemony grew, leading to the formation of the BRICS agreement. Countries like China, India, Brazil, and Russia sought to challenge the dollar's dominance by encouraging exchanges through local currencies. The BRICS bloc quickly became a force to be reckoned with, contributing significantly to global trade and GDP. More countries began to join the movement, seeking alternatives to the dollar-dominated system. As the world moves towards a multipolar economic system, the future of the dollar's dominance hangs in the balance. Will we witness the fall of US hegemony and the birth of a new era? Only time will tell.